What's up, everyone? Welcome into Mike'sLessons.com. My name is Mike Johnston, and I've been making drum videos pretty much since YouTube launched in early 2005. What is up, people? Mike Johnston once again at the Drum Lab. Once you get that down and you've got the feel of that, then all you want to do is just kind of move around, extend it over the bar line, and just play around with it. So I'll show you what that would sound like. drum speed as well. Now, because I always get comments like, you're playing double bass and I'll, I'll go ahead and put quarter notes on the left foot um, just to keep time so you know. What is up, YouTubers, Facebook cats, and Mike'sLessons.com fans? Mike Johnston here, and today we're going to be breaking down uh, that little 30 second. Don't be judging, we all have to start somewhere. But since then, I mean, it's been 14 years of making videos for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Mike'sLessons.com. I've literally made thousands of videos in that time. And one thing that I've learned, or probably the biggest thing that I've learned, is that audio is actually more important than video. I know it sounds crazy that audio would be more important than video when we're talking about making videos, but let me explain. I could watch a drum video with bad video quality and crystal clear audio all day long. But that same exact clip with crystal clear video and everything's perfect and the saturation and contrast is dialed, but with bad audio, that's pure torture. Isn't that crazy? I mean, we would naturally all think, well, if you want to make better videos, you got to get a better camera, you got to get a better lens, you got to get better lights. And that's true, that will help, but that will not help nearly as much as having great audio. So today I'm going to go over with you how I get my personal sound for three different setups. Practice pad lessons, drum set lessons, and the vlogging that I do if I'm out on a clinic tour or if I'm performing at a drum festival. So let's start off with something incredibly simple, and that's how I get my sound when I'm teaching a lesson on the practice pad. Now in this instance, I don't have to think about the sound of the drum set. There's only one surface that's making noise. That's the pad itself. And the second thing that's gonna make noise is this, my face. A diddle, shook the boop. That puts you on left hand lead. So this is one of those alternating exercises. These are the exercises that I use the most when I'm warming up for a clinic or a master class or a festival because they work out both sides of my body. So I have one, two, three, four, pair a diddle, diddle, pair a diddle, diddle, pair a diddle, left, two, three, four, left a diddle, diddle, left a diddle, diddle, left a diddle, right. Now look at that video again and you'll see there's no microphones anywhere in the shot. Not even on my shirt. I'm not wearing a lavalier mic. Heck, right now I'm not wearing one either. So how are we getting that sound? Well, early on I found out if I wore a lavalier mic, it was great for my voice, but then you couldn't really hear the practice pad very well. And if I mic'd the pad, it just sounded too unnatural, like you weren't in the room with me. And as an educator, in all of my videos, I want you to feel like you're in the room with me. So the solution was a shotgun mic. So the shotgun mic that I use is the Audio-Technica 4073. And what's great about a shotgun mic is they're extremely sensitive and extremely directional. So I can point it right between my mouth and the practice pad, and it picks them both up perfectly. No mixing required. This is like, hey, check it out. Tips and tricks. All right, later, brah. In all seriousness, though, press pause. You can come back to this a couple weeks later and try it again and just keep coming back to this. <laughs> Juno, it's just practice. Everyone has to practice. I practice. She gets fired up about this stuff, so just, just practice, okay? <laughs> Come on, I'm filming a video, babe. And back to our lesson. Okay, goal tempo, 120. Good God, that's moving. Don't play. Think about it first. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go.
Now what makes this even more simple is that the camera that I use, this camera right here, is the Canon C200. And the Canon C200 has XLR jacks on the side. Now obviously I fully understand that most people don't have a cinema camera that has XLR jacks, but still you could just go into your interface, that would be fine, and then you only have one channel to deal with to make a practice pad educational video. Or you could even go into a small portable recorder too. And if you are gonna record the audio into something other than the camera, just clap three times, you line those wave files up, delete the camera audio, keep the good audio, boom, Bob's your uncle. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. What's up, YouTubers? Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. So what is the secret spice when it comes to fills? And not even fills, but just patterns, grooves, anything that you're playing. What is it that makes something stand out? You know that we all have access to the same information. It's but first, like watch a little bit of that video again and see how many microphones you can count. On almost every video I've posted to YouTube, someone will always comment, where are all your microphones? And as you can tell, you can't see any on the kit, and that's because I don't use any close mics. My full setup for the drum set is two microphones, one directly over the kit and one in front of the bass drum. And since these are educational videos, it's technically a three mic setup because I've got my overhead, one in front of the kick, and then my lavalier mic for teaching. Now before I tell you what mics I'm using and what preamps I'm using and all of that stuff, let's just talk about why am I using two mics? I mean, I'm an audio technica artist, I have access to microphones. Well, the reason why it's not because I don't have microphones, it's because I love the natural sound that you get from a two mic setup. It once again makes people feel like they're in the room with me. My drums actually sound like drums instead of samples. Now there's nothing wrong with a direct sound. I actually love that sound. I grew up on Rage Against the Corn Tone, so I love that stuff but not for teaching. When I'm teaching, I want you to feel like you're in the room. If I'm performing, then I want it to sound just as perfect as possible. The other reason I switched to a two mic setup about three years ago is because I realized that my internal dynamics were out of whack due to having the ability to mix things. So if I didn't hit the toms hard enough, I could just turn them up in the mix. Or if I was hitting the kick too loud, I could just bring it down in the mix. Now I've got one microphone over the entire drum set and if the ride cymbal is too loud, it's because I played it too loud. So that forces me, everything that's coming through my in-ears, that forces me to be the mixing board myself. I have to be in charge of my dynamics, and I love that. How cool is it to think that the way you set up your microphones could actually make you a better drummer? I think that's pretty cool. So as far as my two mic setup, I have two of the exact same mics. It is the AT5045 cardioid condenser mic. I use this as my overhead and I use this in front of my bass drum. Even though this microphone is small, it has a huge diaphragm, so it picks up a massive range of frequencies. Plus, it has a really high SPL, so that means that I can put it in front of the bass drum and not worry about damaging the mic. Now, I fully understand that these two microphones are expensive, but one thing that I've always thought is, I only have two microphones, so I want them to be good microphones. Another thing that's really important to take into consideration is where will this audio that you're recording, where will it show up? In the case of the stuff that I'm doing, it's all educational based, and it's gonna be on a wide range of devices. Some people will see it on YouTube through their phone. Some people will watch it on YouTube through their big screen television and their big sound system. Some people will be watching on their laptop, but then using really high-end headphones. 
So for me, it's important that I have really, really great sound. But maybe you're in a situation where 99% of your content will be watched by people holding their phone in front of their face. And then in that case, is it really necessary to have the greatest mics in the world? No, you can actually save a ton of money, have a budget mic setup and still get a great sound. One of the mics that I always recommend to my students is the Audio-Technica AT2035. The great thing about this mic, besides being super affordable, is the fact that it's in cardioid pattern. Now, if you're gonna use this in a two mic setup like I'm doing, putting this directly over the kit, most likely we don't want sound coming from your ceiling or from the side. So we want it in cardioid pattern, only picking up what's below it, like your drum set. The other thing that I love about this is it has a negative 10 dB switch on it. So if I'm gonna put this in front of my bass drum, I can throw that negative 10 dB pad on and then I know I'm not gonna overload the microphone. So I'm gonna run over to the kit real quick. I'm gonna play a groove for you using two of the Audio-Technica AT5045s. Then I'll switch to the cheaper microphones, the AT2035s. And depending on what you're watching this on, you actually might not hear that big of a difference. So is it really worth it to spend more money on higher quality microphones? Well, that just depends on where people are going to be listening to what you've recorded. For me, I know people are gonna be listening to my stuff and watching my stuff on smartphones, but all the way up to super high-end speaker systems. So yes, it is worth it to me to have very good microphones so that I can produce the best quality sound possible. Now, one last thing I wanna warn you about. As you spend more money on microphones, don't think that it's just gonna instantly sound better. It actually might sound worse. But what's happening is it's not that it's worse. It's that it's capturing more of the true audio, the real audio of what things actually sound like. And it's giving you all of the freedom in the world to do whatever you want in the mix. So with high-end microphones, if I record my drum set and I wanna give it more of a jazz mix, I have the freedom to do that. If I wanna make it more of a rock mix, I have the freedom to do that. And to me, that freedom is everything. I wanna record, know that all the frequencies, all the spectrum was completely completely captured, and then I can do whatever I want once I'm mixing the audio. Now, last but not least, we need to talk a little bit about vlogging. And this is something that maybe two or three years ago I would have never brought up, but increasingly, day by day, more and more students are asking me about getting good audio for their vlogs. And this isn't just professional vloggers that are trying to become YouTube stars. These are just students of mine that are trying to document what they're doing and they want it to sound good and I don't blame them. So as far as a really, really handy vlogging setup, I've got a Canon EOS M50. This is a super, super compact, small mirrorless camera. Then I've got a really wide angle lens on here, a 16 mil 1.4 Sigma. And that way I can hold it out in front of me and know that I'm in frame. It also has a flip out screen, really important if you're gonna be vlogging. Now, as far as getting good audio, the great thing about this camera is it does have a mic in jack, that is awesome, and then I can use this, the Audio-Technica 8024. It's a little mini shotgun mic, once again, super directional, but the thing that I love about it is it's got a switch on top for mono and stereo. So if I'm trying to capture the atmosphere of something when I'm out on a clinic tour and I'm walking around, I can switch it to stereo and then it's gonna pick up the atmosphere, everything around me as I'm panning around. And I love that, it's giving me good atmospheric sound. But if I'm actually vlogging and speaking to the mic, then I wanna switch it into mono. So it's just capturing everything, one single sound source right in front of it and it's getting a perfect vlog sound. Yeah. What's up guys, it's day three of the Minel Clinic Tour. I am in Derby tonight and I'm so excited to play. The venue that I'm performing at tonight was built in the 1600s. 1600s, how cool is that? 
other thing that I really love about the 8024 is that it actually gets really good drum tones all by itself straight into camera. So let's say I'm out on a clinic tour and I'm doing sound check and I just want to get a little clip for Instagram. I can just hand this camera to someone, put on the 10 dB pad or even the 20 dB pad and then have them film me and it's going to have really usable drum audio. So hopefully by now you've realized a couple of things. One, you don't need a ton of mics to get great sound. And it's also just a great place to start. Like I said, it's really important to be able to mix yourself. And then from there you can slowly bring in maybe a snare mic and then eventually add a second overhead mic to get a stereo sound. And then eventually mic the toms and then get a room mic. It's okay to go big eventually, but you wanna wait until your ear is at a point that you hear, oh, I wish I had that thing. I wish I could do this and I just can't accomplish this thing that's stuck in my head with the limited setup I have. That's when I always know it's time for me to get something new is when I can finally hear that I'm missing something that will get me to that next level. And more importantly, hopefully you've now realized that if you want to make great videos, you need great audio. Like I said at the very beginning of this whole thing, great audio is more important to a video than the video itself. It still blows my mind to say that out loud, but it's absolutely true. So thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. I hope you had a blast. I hope you learned something. And I hope at some point in this video you went, I could totally do this, to which I would say, yes, you absolutely can. So massive thanks to Audio Technica, massive thanks to Sweetwater for allowing me to do this. Check out mikeslessons.com if you get a chance, and I will see you guys next time.